Closed Circuit. A high-profile terrorism case unexpectedly binds together two ex-lovers on the defense team, testing the limits of their loyalties and placing their lives in jeopardy. Starring Eric Bana, who's pretty well known, and Rebecca Hall, who, to refresh your memory, was the Vicky in Vicky Cristina Barcelona. She shows up in Iron Man 3. To be honest, she does such a good American, I didn't even realize she was English. Um, directed by John Crowley, uh, who's done things I've never heard of. Boy A, anyone? Intermission? I don't know. <laughs> and written by Stephen Knight, who did Eastern Promises. Do you have a mini-review for us, Bob? Yes. Close Circuit. I gave this movie a 3.5 out of 5. Had me at international suspense thriller, in quotes, <laughs> but had a hard time keeping me with the convoluted approach of its villainous characters. That said, enjoyable performances and interesting subject matter. Yeah, 3.5 out of 5. How about you? Here's my minute review. I was worried it would be boring, which it thankfully wasn't. And I'm not usually a plot hole stickler, but a suspense thriller pretty much needs its plot to be solid and tight, and this one wasn't. Banners and Hall's chemistry could only make up for so many moments of confusion. Three out of five. Ah, you're less forgiving than I was, but it seems like we had the same problem. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mentioned last week that the previews looked dreadfully dull, so I was skeptical going into closed circuit. And it's weird, right after I saw it, I was happy that it wasn't nearly as boring as I thought. It, since it exceeded my expectations, it made me like it. But once I sat down and started putting some notes together for my review, started thinking about it, the more I realized how flawed Closed Circuit was. <laughs> yeah, it really was. I, I don't know where to start here. I think, well, in, in my mini-review, I alluded to this. The, uh, the quote-unquote bad guys in the movie, um, which I guess is the, the, the MI5, you know, the equivalent of, what is that, the CIA, the NSA, a combination in England? At one point, they made a distinction between MI5 and MI6, like I was supposed to know what that was, and me being an American, I'm like, uh, I, I don't know the difference there. I, it's something I know. like that, though. Yeah, I noticed that, too. I'm like, oh, the number changed in the acronym. It's a different team. Should I know that? Is one, like, James Bond level and one's less James Bond level? That's as yeah. far as I went. <laughs> but something like that, CIA, NSA, FBI, something like that. Right, so the interesting thing is is that, you know, the, we're supposed to get this uh, feeling that you're constantly being watched or being managed if you are important to these agencies, the British version of, you know, what happens in the U.S. And I got that feeling a little bit, but as the movie went along further and further, I got it less and less because it, when they kind of pulled back the curtain and they showed some of the people pulling the levers of these uh, top secret agencies, it just didn't come across as, as believable with the two to three characters that were on, on that side. And then one other quick thing, the other problem, which I'm sure we'll get into, is that uh, you just couldn't keep track of when they wanted to uh, eliminate somebody because that was the solution versus do something else like for being these top secret government agencies, they're really fickle on their approach. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, uh, heading back on one thing you just mentioned. So the movie is called Closed Circuit, right? And they make a big deal about how people are always being watched. But in the second half of the movie, sometimes, uh, somehow they're available, they're able to avoid cameras pretty much whenever they need to. I mean, the government knows every time Martin Rose, played by Eric Bannon, needs a taxi in the first half. But in the second half, they can't find him for the life of him. <laughs> right, and for being a closed circuit, it, it totally like sidesteps the internet. Like that's just missing in action in the movie. It's all about like old school cameras yeah, on blocked corners. Yeah, it's it felt very like '80s or '90s esque or something. I mean, and it it worked in a in a way, except for that the internet is such a predominant part of everyday life that it, that's the part that didn't work. And I was like, wait, is this a new movie or an old one? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, it could, yeah, it could have been written 15 years ago, 20 years ago, easy, it seems like. And then the other thing you mentioned as far as the, what I'm going to call the scope of the uh, conspiracy and how, how coherent it was at, at different times, uh, for me, what I think is similar to that but was a disappointment for me was, was how much this conspiracy seems to permeate through the government, how deep it went. I was hoping for like a little more gray area in the principles that, that the various people involved had. Uh, you know, a little bit of understandable motivation to the bad guys, even if they were like taking things too far. But, you know, not really. They were just pretty much bad. And the number of people who went along with the evil plot in the government, without questioning, was just disappointing, pointing to me as someone who wants a little more ambiguity in my political thrillers. I, I totally agree with you. There, there was 
uh, for a while, it, you, you were a little unclear of who was good and who was bad, and then they do reveals on different characters, and there's, like, no nuance. It's just, like, they're all pawns of the government. They're either sold out or they're, like, freedom fighters, and there's no real in-between. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't hate everything, though. I mean, I feel like we should maybe touch on a couple good things. Definitely. <laughs> um, but so to start with some of the good, I think the good starts with the acting. I loved Eric Bann. I loved Rebecca Hall. Right from the beginning, uh, you know, when Hall, as special advocate Claudia Simmons Howe, visits the newly appointed defense attorney Martin Rose, played by Eric Bana, we just see the tension and get that they have history immediately. Uh, you know, supposedly they're not supposed to talk to each other because they have different important roles in the justice system. Uh, and right there they decide, you know, based on a lot of previous relationship, I guess, just to hide their history and... Right from the get-go, they're co-conspirators in a, in a certain sense. And I think that's the best part of the movie, at least it was for me, seeing more and more of their relationship revealed, how they interact with each other in lots of different circumstances, like they've known each other for a long time. Yeah, um, I also enjoyed some of the ensemble cast, like Jim Broadbent. Um, yeah. And he'd give these awesome monologues over breakfast while he's, like, cutting his <laughs> dinner or breakfast, you know, his French toast, and he's like, well, well here's the thing. He takes a bite with his fork, and I, I think he's a great actor anyway. He's He, he works for me in most every role in every movie I've ever seen him in. Uh, but for being a, a non-nuanced, deliberately corrupt uh, pencil pusher, I bought it with him way more than with a lot of the other characters who felt a little more over the top, especially like the the characters that had to execute um, on the killings and randomly try to kill people but then not kill them. Um, those characters just didn't work nearly as well. Uh, but Jim Broadbent was great. So I liked Kieran Hines. I mean, I think he was written in a little bit disappointing way, but I think he yeah. plays that, that, uh, that kind of guy who's just sort of weird-looking but confident and... I don't know how to describe him, but I always like a good Kieran Hines character. Yeah, I agree. Um, I could have used with some more nuance, but uh, I, I did love his uh, chipper attitude, and he, he played the part well of, you know, he's in the system, he's a government guy, but he's he's uh, he's not boring, he's not just, um, uh, well, I guess I don't want to give away too much, but he did a good job. <laughs> yeah, uh, the other one that I actually found myself enjoying... Uh, I didn't know him before, but Riz Ahmed, he pulls off that polite and helpful secret agent who's obviously hiding something more sinister, but he doesn't really let you know what it is up front. Yeah, see, now he's the character, one of the characters I was referring to that uh, oh, okay. when he when he has to do his dirty work, it felt very uh, forced. Uh, there are a couple of scenes where he, he does the Hollywood... Um, I'm going to start killing you, and while I'm trying to kill you, I will explain the plot, <laughs> give you a monologue, you know, during my evil scene. He just didn't work as well for me. <laughs> That's fair. I guess I, I liked him more on those early scenes when he's delivering the documents or explaining to uh, to Claudia how things are going to have to go. And and just like Claudia, you can see instantly that, you know, he's doing his job, he's being very helpful, but he's also hiding something. And I thought at those moments I he was pretty good. Sure, sure, yeah. I, and this does have a little bit of the... Um, it, it started better than it ends. It's kind of one of those movies. Uh, not extremely so. It's pretty consistent, but I still would go with the first half being better than the second half. Would, would you say the same? Oh, yeah. One of the things I liked as you know an American lawyer was getting an up-close glimpse at the legal system in the UK. A lot's really similar, but they have a lot of details that are different. For example, those silly wigs <laughs> um, <laughs> and those uncomfortable-looking courtrooms or little details like the ribbons on the sealed documents. And all that was pretty cool. And uh, I also liked the reminder um, how, the, I, how w the war on terrorism leads to giving up civil liberties if we're not careful. And, and I think of that as such an American thing we're wrestling with. Uh, but sometimes I forget that other countries have the exact same thing. And that that uh, I felt like it was more of a pressing issue in the first half before it got sort of exaggerated out of proportion in the, in the second half. Yeah, totally agree. Um, that was the part of the premise that, that really kind of grabs you as it, as, it, as it starts, and then it sort of slowly slides away as, as it becomes more about the specifics of the situation, and, and uh, the, the, the overarching message is a little more heavy-handed by the end. Uh, you know, one person we didn't talk about is Julia Stiles. What did you think of her... Appearance. She doesn't have a huge role. Uh, she plays a reporter, and um, she only gets a scene or two. Uh, but I, I'm I'm a I'm a fan of Julia Stiles. I, I like her in a lot of stuff I've seen her. You know, 
for the last 10, 15 years, um, but I felt like she didn't have much to go with in this one. Yeah, I felt like there wasn't much there. I felt like if we just eliminated those scenes, the movie wouldn't have been basically any different, to be quite honest. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, I have one thing now that we're probably getting close to the end of this review, and this is my biggest, my biggest problem with it. Uh, I felt like the plot just had some gaping holes. Um, there's just a lot not to like. So... One of the major ones is when Martin Rose, Eric Bana, he figures out something important about the defendant, he decides immediately he's going to break his oath and tell Claudia. And in the very next breath he says, but don't do anything about this. It's like, wait, so why did you go out of your way to break the law to tell her, only to try and keep her from acting on this information? If you were smart, you'd keep it to yourself if you didn't want her to do anything, since it's against the law anyway. Uh, but no, uh, he doesn't. And it turns out that the whole rest of the story pretty much depends on that blunder. <laughs> yeah, there there is that plot hole. I guess um, th now that you frame it that way, I, I suppose it's starting to bother me even more. I guess the one that bothered me even more than that, though, was uh, the fact that Claudia as a character, and you see this in the previews, um, you know, they try to eliminate her, the they being, you know, whichever government body uh, that's, that's trying to put a lid on this whole thing. But then they try to... But then when they are unsuccessful... Um, then she's no longer needs to be eliminated soon after that scene. Or I don't know. There's just a lot of times where the the they they switch their tactics. They're like, wow, we got to take this person out. Oh, never mind, not anymore. And the movie doesn't do a good job of showing you why the government acts in the way that they do to try to keep a lid on this whole thing. It just feels like sometimes they kill people, sometimes they don't, and it's more for the suspense of the act of the movie that we're in rather than like any sort of plot point. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. So if I were to give my own final word, you know, like I say, the chemistry between the two leads kept me into the movie the whole time. And if maybe you can somehow turn your brain off and not think about the problems, you might like it a lot. Just uh, <laughs> Anyway, that's all I have to say. What's, what's the final word? Wrap this up for us, Bob. Yeah, I, w I was definitely not bored. Um, it's decent pacing. It's it's uh, interesting subject matter. Um, performances are good. Uh, you you suspend disbelief in some annoying ways, but uh, overall, I still enjoyed it. Uh, so three point five out of five. See it if you're interested in this kind of subject matter and you're okay with some of these flaws. But otherwise, it's a pass. You can you could see other things that are better. <laughs>